Hello friends, welcome to your only channel Times of Coding. Today in our series Scala Express, we will learn about Scala Implicits. This session will help you to understand Scala Implicits, its advantage and usage. In previous session, we have understood about abstract type, pre-initialization and path dependent types. In this session, we will learn about rules of implicit, implicit class and implicit parameters. Implicit conversions are often helpful for working with two bodies of software that were developed without each other in mind. Each library has its own way to encode a concept that is essentially the same thing. Implicit conversions help by reducing the number of explicit conversions that are needed from one type to another type. Okay, so here I'm defining one implicit function. Implicit you need to write this keyword first and then you need to usual way of defining some function. I'm keeping here change int to a string. This will have parameter type as int named x and this will get us a string. How it will get us? We will simply write x dot to a string in body. Now we are converting this type implicitly here from int to a string. Then we will see when this function will get applied. So here I'm simply keeping 10. Now 10 is an int value, compiler don't need to look for additional functions. So compiler will simply give int is equal to 10. Now when we do concat, this concat function comes from the string class. So that 10 has to be string. Now we have got one function as implicit type, which can change integer to string. So first compiler will look whether this statement can be successfully executed or not. If it is not, then compiler will look whether there are some implicit definition exist for this conversion where the expectation is this 10 will get convert into a string type. So now 10 as a string concatenates 10. It has got the implicit function. So it is good. I hope you understood how to define implicit function and how it will get implied. Now let's see the rules. So first rule is the marking rule. Only definition marked implicit that means we can use it to mark any variable, any function or object definition as implicit. Right now we are doing implicit for functions here. Okay. Second rule is the scope rule. An inserted implicit conversion must be in a scope as a single identifier. Let me repeat, must be in a scope as a single identifier or be associated with the source or target type of that conversion. So let's say if I'm defining object rupee here and I'm defining one function inside that object rupee as implicit def change dollar to rupee. Now here I'm passing money type of rupee and rupee is the class which we have already defined. So that money we're keeping here is parameter that will actually have dollar in their primary construct. So this function will change dollar value to rupee value. So it will tell rupees percentage d format money dot dollar multiply by 75. So here I'm taking a standard money to dollar ratio, which is approx 75 these days. Now we have defined companion object here. If you see, we have got class as rupee and we have got object as rupee, but we can create some class exchange. Now exchange gives us the service by which we can do the exchange from one currency value to another currency value. But this is a transaction. And apart from money, there is an important value we need to keep track with transaction is time. So we are taking here is time, which is date type and dollar, which is int type. Okay, now we are extending rupee and giving dollar value to its primary construct. Since we have defined class, so let's define some object also. So now I'm defining exchange object. Exchange is our class, which we have defined above. So I'm defining here exchange object, which will get date, the current date with time and two dollars I wanted to exchange in money. So I'm just keeping two dollar here. And then output, I will be having a string type and this will have transaction value. So whatever transaction we have stored here that I will convert into a string value. And since we have defined this as implicit function, so this will take money, but when we expect a string out of it, this function implicitly will apply it to that statement. So here, transaction is a type of exchange. Now compiler will look how the compiler can 
change the state of this transaction object from exchange to string now it will have trouble so it will look for implicit definition then and it will find this implicit function here so compiler will be happy and it will assign the transaction value according to implicit definition in this variable here now we will print this output and then we'll have another debug message called exchange time was so this is the object of exchange and here we can retrieve this value as well so when we are creating output and initiating with transaction so now let's move to third rule one at a time so only one implicit is inserted the compiler will never rewrite x plus one to implicit convert one which is implicit convert two of x plus y that means if you see here these are two implicit functions and compiler will not do likewise so it will apply just one implicit function at one time the fourth rule is explicit rule which is whenever code checks as it is written no implicits will be attempted so first by default compiler will check for explicit definitions only if it do not find any explicit definition as per the expectation of written code then it will look for implicit functions and if it do not find implicit functions also then it will end up in exceptions the fifth rule will be naming in implicit conversions if you want to write it explicitly in a method application and for determining which implicit conversions are available at any place in the program we can do likewise so here i'm creating object called convert now i'm having two functions here both are implicit type one is string to array type character and another one is change int to string type so here we will have int and we will give a string and for this function we are having a string as parameter and we will give array of character okay so now we can call implicitly also so here i'm defining one object called execute in that object execute i'm defining main and here i'm importing a string to array type character this function here now i'm defining times of coding and this times of coding is a string type if you see here then i'm defining one another variable which is expecting a value as array of characters so i will assign this toc to this array toc now here compiler will not get any conversion so it will use this string to type character conversion now we will print a string value of toc here convert it into list of characters from here output we will get by executing above logic and it is important that the implicit conversion had names because that is the only way you could selectively import one not the other if you do not give names to this function then which function you wanted to import that you cannot specify so it is important that you keep name for your implicit functions and then if it is required you can import like this okay so when we execute it this object we have got a string value times of coding converted into list of times of coding and this is the format we have expected from this statement you see implicit classes were added in scala from 2.10 version and the objective was to write rich wrapper classes for such classes compiler also generates the implicit conversion from the classes constructor parameter to the classes itself such a conversion is just what you need if you plan to use the class for the rich wrapper pattern now in this example i'm defining one case class stock this stock will have a price and quantity both are int type then i'm defining one implicit class here which is stock buying so stock buying will ask you the price so you will give them as primary constructor parameter then it is having method called x so this x will have parameter as quantity and when you pass quantity while calling this x method of class stock buying you will get a stock object which is having price and its quantity so let's say if we are buying hdfc stock here and i'm simply keeping 750 multiply by 4 which is the approx these days price then we will get four share of hdfc stock at the price of 750 and this x 
is a function of implicit class stock buying. That's why we have not defined anything explicitly here. So compiler first will end up finding nothing. Then it will start looking for implicits. So then it will get implicit constructor of this class as a stock buying, which takes price as int type. And then it has got method also called x. So x will be applied here. Then x we are explicitly calling. If you see in a scala, you don't need to write braces. So as per that logic, you are explicitly defining x here. And that x is having expectation that you need to pass quantity type of int. So we are already doing it. So that's how you can define your implicit classes also and you can work with them. Okay, so now moving on. When you execute this statement, you will get well of buy hdfc stock object which is type of stock and you have got a stock where you have got price and quantity so let's understand how we can define implicit parameters now to understand implicit parameters i'm having one class called salutations so salutations is having prefix as a string okay and then i'm having object called greet this object greet is having apply method which expect us to give name type of string and it has implicit variable called salute and this salute is type of salutation if you see from here okay in the body of this function i have written one debug message called wish you very happy learning scala salute dot prefix now this salute dot prefix will come from this val here and then i'm having concatenation with the space dot name so name will come from this parameter here okay now I'm creating one object of this salutation class. So I'm writing val martin salutation is equal to new salutations mister. So here I'm defining mister s salutation for martin salutation object. And then I'm calling greet because greet is an object. So we don't require to write anything as new. So greet and greet has got apply which expect us to write name. So I'm writing greet braces martin. And here I'm passing Martin salutation explicitly. But the same we can achieve by not writing this Martin salutation also. So here I'm keeping this implicit with Martin salutation now. Because here we have expected implicit parameter. So we need to make this Martin salutation as implicit. You see, this Martin salutation is type of salutation. So we will make this as implicit variable here. And then we will simply call greet Martin. Now when we call greet martin compiler will not find the second implicit salutations so it will have some exception and then it will look for implicit definition so it will get martin salutations so it will apply that implicitly so this is in theory we have covered today content okay so first example we have seen today is implicit definition which will do state transition from int type to a string type Okay, so let's run this now. We have defined function change int dot to a string which will get int type and give a string type. Here I'm writing 10 and which is treated as int. Now I'm writing 10 and then again I'm writing 10 but here I'm calling concat on this 10 and in that concat as argument I'm passing a space 10. So that's why this concat expected this 10 to be a string type this implicit will be applied on this and then this concat will execute it so we are having a string 10 space 10 after this example we have defined class rupee where this will get dollar as type of int and then we have defined object type of rupee which is having implicit function called change dollar to rupee. Now this is expecting money as rupee type, which we have defined here. So this function will get money type of rupee and rupee is having a type of int named dollar as parameter. Now this function will get us a string, which is rupee after exchange from dollar. Since we need to apply exchange here, we have defined exchange as well time type of date dollar type of int is extending rupee and it is giving same dollar from here to reference here 
then we have defined main function here and in that main we are doing transaction type of exchange so this class object we are creating in rupee object we are passing the current time and we are keeping two dollars and here this transaction is type of exchange now we are creating output which is type of history and we are assigning this transaction into output so this implicit will be applied automatically because we don't have any another function which can change from exchange type to a string type we are writing debug messages output and exchange time was transaction dot time so now it's time to run this function okay so you see since we have passed two dollars we have got rupee is equal to 150 here and exchange time was sunday july 12 21 43 45 seconds ist 2020 okay after this example we have talked about converts so convert is having two implicit functions here a string to array type character and change int to a string type so here we are expecting s a string type as parameter which we are creating to array and here we are expecting int type x which we are creating to a string so this is our implicit functions inside this convert object now we are having another object called execute and from main method of execute we will import this converts a string to array type character only this function and then we are defining one toc as times of coding and this is a string type now we are defining array of toc and we are declaring type of array of characters and as a value we are passing reference to this variable okay then we are printing a string value toc convert it into list of array toc dot to list here okay let's run this function now so you see a string value we have got as times of coding and then we have converted into list so we have got list of times of coding characters now after this example implicit classes so here i'm defining case class called a stock which will have two parameter price and quantity both are int type then i'm defining implicit class dot stock buying which is expecting price and in that class i'm defining method x this expect quantity if we call this function we will get a stock object which has price and its quantity so now let's call this function and i'm executing now so here our stock buying class has been defined and then we have called buy hdfc stock so it is a stock type because we have got implicit class and we are getting a stock type of object price 750 1750 and quantity 4 now after this example we have seen example of salutation here we are defining class as salutations and we are keeping prefix of a string type now i'm writing val here because i wanted to refer this prefix in my further program so then i'm creating object called greet which is having apply now apply we have seen in one of my previous session so here i will not discuss details about it so here i'm having greet object and i'm having apply method which is expecting us two parameters here one is name and another one is implicit type of salutation then we are having debug message here which you very happy learning is kala salutation dot prefix referencing here plus name which will come from here now let's create some example of this class so i'm writing new salutation first where i'm keeping mr and then i'm calling greet so greet expect us to have name so i'm keeping martin and in this i'm passing martin salutation as we have defined here so let me execute now and you see we have got this object here and then which you very happy learning is kala mr martin which we were expecting from this but now if you observe we have explicitly called this martin salutation but here as parameter we have expected as implicit 
how we will get implicit we need to define that martin salutation as implicit now so here i'm defining martin salutation as implicit and i'm keeping same mister okay so now when i call greet i will not define martin salutation as we were defining earlier now let me execute again okay and we have defined martin's salutation here and then we have got wish you very happy learning mr martin so if you see salutation we have not passed here but instead we are getting mr martin here and compiler is having no issues so with this example we have completed today content i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching happy learning